Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Taisha. So I figured today I would do um, a video that will hopefully be like my back to school 2023-24 year, right? Um, classroom series, just of teacher tips, um, classroom setup, classroom management, how I lesson plan, how I plan a whole curriculum, um, just things that I wish I would have known year one versus year four right now i'm going into year four of teaching high school english um i primarily teach 10th and 11th grade this year i'll teach all 10th grade sorry if i wipe my eye a lot i have something in my eye i think it's a cat hair we live with four cats um actually we live with like six but four and or i digress so today i figured um i would just give you guys my list of 10 things that I feel that every teacher should probably have in their classroom, not necessarily things like extra markers, um, dry erase boards, like post notes, all those things, like you definitely need to have a functioning, oh look at my baby patches, have a functioning classroom or you should have for a functioning classroom. But these are things that throughout the years, I'm like, okay, I need this, man, I need this right now. Um, so I'm just gonna share that with you. And these are in no particular order. Um, but I'll try to make them make sense. So this is my 10 list of things that I think you need in your classroom. Um, first and foremost, a buzzer. Um, I wish I had them all on me. I'm at home, obviously. Um, but it's basically like, I'll link it or maybe I'll put a picture somewhere in here. It's basically just a buzzer that you give students that they can drop down on when they want to answer a question. I use these buzzers a lot when I play Jeopardy. I play Jeopardy all the time. When I do my student survey at the end of the year, Jeopardy is always the one game that they're like, yes, you need to keep that in your teacher toolbox. They don't say teacher toolbox, but that's kind of how I take it. Um, they love it. But the buzzers help for me like Jeopardy, okay, if you want to answer, you need to hit the buzzer, right? You can't just yell it out at me or if it's your turn, I will know that your group is ready to present your answer when you hit the buzzer. So I'm telling you a buzzer, I loved it. Um, I have two, four, six, eight. I have eight of them and I buy them in packs of two. They were graciously gifted to me by my husband. So that was a, like a blessing because they're not super cheap. Um, number two, Uno cards and playing cards. I cannot stress to you how much you need a regular pack of pack of playing cards and a pack of Uno cards in your classroom. Um, I use them from uh, putting out group work. Um, I use them on the first day to do seat assignments. Um, my students use them when we're doing testing and they're stuck at advisory all day. Um, or we're like on a weird schedule where you're just sitting in my room for 20 minutes and you don't have anything to do until we transition to another classroom. Um, Uno cards, Uno cards, Uno cards. I actually have at this point, moment in my classroom three separate packs of Uno cards. I'm telling you, get yourself Uno cards and playing cards. And also when I do stations, I will always have a brain break station and I'll usually put like Jenga and then the Uno cards there and that'll be their brain break. Um, next one is there are large like duck clips that you can open and um, clip like a bunch of paperwork or you can put them on something or you can hang something up. I think those are great for a magnitude of reasons. Um, for me, I use them um, for shelving. If, let me see the best way I can explain this to you guys. This year I will teach three sections of 10th grade English. So they're not all the exact same session. So I have an honors English, um, a traditional standard English, and then a year long English. So I need to basically differentiate differentiate each one of those classes. So I'll take the duckbill clip and I'll put it on like the bookshelf or the shelf where they will put all of their notebooks that they use for the semester. And then I'll have on front of it with a piece of tape or paper, you know, honors English or year long or standards. That way they know, okay, this is our section. Um, I also use it if I have like a whole stack of papers that I need to take from point A to point B, um, I'll clip those. And we don't think about things like that until we need them. So I'm telling you, get you a set, a set of them and get you a set that is different sizes. Um, okay, I know this is a weird one and you're probably like, why do you need this in your classroom? but it was my most commonly used thing last year that had nothing to do with academics and those are blankets. Oh my gosh. Especially in the winter months when they kick on um, 
when they don't kick on the heat yet and it's cold the girls want blankets even the boys want blankets um and then in the spring when they do kick on the ac and it's freezing in my classroom because i'm at the top um they want blankets and i have girls and boys who will come to my classroom knock on my door and say hey miss nam can i get a blanket yes just make sure you bring it back they're not even my students and they know i have a huge baskets of blankets and i take them home usually every friday and i wash them um so yes get you some blankets and then a stop clock or a way you can do like a countdown really really quickly so i just have a regular timer like a kitchen timer but any way that you can do like, okay, y'all got five minutes to do this. Y'all got three minutes to do this. Y'all got eight minutes to do this. Um, I know a lot of people use the timers on YouTube. And those are great if you have the tab open and ready to go. But if it's a spare of the moment thing, you're like, okay, y'all, y'all got five more minutes left to do this assignment. I don't want to have to go dig my phone out. I don't want to have to jump on YouTube to find a five minute timer. So I'm just going to set five minutes on my timer, set it down somewhere. And we know when it dings, that's it, you're five minutes up. Um, I read some articles that talk about how like timers aren't good in classrooms, but for the most part, I feel like there's not enough evidence to dispute the fact that you should not use a timer in your classroom. I think they're a great way to keep kids on task, keep you on task. Um, if I have a classroom full of 30 kids and only one kid is kind of triggered by a timer, then you and I will have a conversation about how we can work together, but for the most part, we're using a timer. Um, next plastic sleeves when I tell you these plastic sleeves were a lifesaver to me I had them on my Amazon wish list last year and I was so grateful when I got them because they're they're not super expensive but they're not super cheap they're one of those things you're like oh do I spend my money on this or do I spend my money somewhere else and I was so grateful that someone donated it to me um it was a huge pack I think of like 20 and when I tell you I use these all the time I do a ton of stations at my classrooms where the kids are getting up and walking around to fill out, you know, um, a notes organizer or they're answering questions or they're doing like a scavenger hunt or we're just playing a game. Um, a lot of times when I get to testing, we'll do a lot of EOC review games. So, you know, I need them up out of their seats. I'm a firm believer in my classroom that a body in motion is a body that's learning and growing. So anytime I can get my kids up out of their seats, we're doing it and the way I do that is I use these plastic sleeves so for example if this was my assignment um, and I had it written on here or maybe the definition to something instead of just hanging this on my wall and then tearing it down later on I just simply put this in the sleeve and then hang the whole sleeve up that way I'm not actually messing up the paper itself um, so when I tell you those things are great they're wonderful and to go with that I suggest you get either washi tape a nice collection of washi tape or painters tape either one a lot of, I have washi tape because I scrapbook um, and I do bullet journaling excuse me so I have a collection of washi tape that I use but if you don't have washi tape just get you like a 10 pack of painters tape because painters tape is wonderful when you need to hang stuff on the wall and you don't want to use like a stapler or um, a thumbtack and you just want to quickly hang it up but then be able to take it off later on um, washi tape is your friend and painters tape and the activity I do on day one with the seating chart with the um, deck of cards I put the cards down with washi tape that way the students aren't actually moving the deck of cards or where they're supposed to sit and I can explain that in like a, what I do on my first week back at school video so yes get you some painters tape or some washi tape and then these last two things three things I think I'm at I've one two three four five six seven eight nine did I not do a ten thing okay the last two things are again things that you don't necessarily have to have for a function classroom to teach or academic standards but they're just as important as the blankets and those are these are kind of two things but I'll break them down one something the kids can fidget with um, not necessarily something that makes noise but something that is a soundless fidget thing so I'll tell you I'll give you an example um, Last year, my students, we did an activity with Play-Doh, and this was for 11th grade. You think you don't need Play-Doh for 11th grade? Yes, I did. And we did an activity with Play-Doh, and then I just had all those leftover Play-Doh. So I just put it in a basket and set it by the door. And when I was finding that kids were coming into the classroom, they were grabbing their notebooks, and then they were grabbing a pack of Play-Doh and taking it to their desk and just playing with it. 
just building things, just moving. They would roll it and honestly, it wasn't a distraction to me. It didn't make any sounds. It wasn't dirty. They cleaned up after themselves. But I found that the kids, if they had something to do, they were more likely to pay attention and do what they were supposed to do. I'm just saying, get you something in your class that the kids can, you know, kind of fidget with while they're in the middle of the lesson, be it Play-Doh. Um, those, I know they have like the soft poppers, but anything like that that the kids can utilize while they're learning is I think a helpful thing. And then the next thing is something on your desk that will keep your students occupied at the desk when they're at your desk. Um, and let me explain how this works. So oftentimes I teach in blocks, so I teach for roughly 98 minutes. We're supposed to teach bell to bell, but that doesn't always happen. Sometimes I will say, all right, y'all, y'all went hard today. Y'all done a great job. These last maybe eight minutes of class are all yours. You do whatever you need to do. You can talk with your buddy. You can listen to music. You can relax. You can take a quick nap. Long as you're not loud and destructive to everybody else in the building. Um, and it works. But what I find is I go sit at my desk and I'm just trying to check emails real quick, do what I need to do, drink. And I have like the flock of seagulls who will descend on my desk and I look up I'm like what are y'all doing like go hang out with your friends go talk to someone and they're usually if you're just talking to me and I find that it's often boys I don't know why but I'll just look up and there will be a flock of boys and I'm like what are y'all doing and I find that you know we're talking just chatting nothing serious but they'll be like touching stuff on my bed and I don't want them to touch my personal stuff so I have to have things up there for them to touch and it's usually like mcdonald toys that i love or like um i'll show you i'll try to insert a clip of it but i have like little figurines on my desk that i've just collected along the way but i have this tic-tac-toe board that i got and it's probably not even this big it's probably half of this and they play tic-tac-toe up there while they're talking to me now i have discovered later on towards the end of the year last year that they were really up there because they wanted me to open up my drawer and give them a piece of candy i'm like y'all get out of my face i'm not giving you any more candy i've, I've already distributed all the candy i'm gonna do today um but yeah they also wanted to just chit chat and be nosy with me so yeah something on your desk and i think that i'm trying to see what time i'm at about 12 minutes um i cannot remember what the last thing was and it'll, hopefully it'll come to me so again let me run down this list to you guys buzzers large duck clips uno or playing cards blankets um, a stop clock or some type of watch that you can quickly set um, the plastic sleeves, painter's tape or washi tape, something that your kids can fit it with, um, a desk toy, and I don't know what number 10 was, probably something to help you relax, so like a scentsy thing that smells good, um, a gallon of water to help you keep you hydrated, actually <laughs> get used to not being able to go, well no, let me take that back, I know a lot of teachers say that they aren't, they don't pee during their classes, I'm sorry, if I have to go, I'm going. I will knock on one of my co-workers doors and say hey can you listen out I'm going to the bathroom real quick I'm not holding my pee for anybody period um, I we have a system in our hallway the hallway that I teach on that hey if you gotta go go like do not stand there and hop around and be uncomfortable because you don't leave your classroom I don't do it when I'm in the middle of like lecturing but if my kids are doing the work an independent activity or group activity hey y'all I'm going to the bathroom real quick so and so's keeping out if you need something just hop over and ask them and usually I've already built a culture around my students that they know Miss Nam is going to be quick chain playing if we come in here and cutting up it's going to be over with so anyways um I will try to link everything down below um I don't have an Amazon storefront yet but I'll just try to like make a list of it I also have some other cool teacher videos. Um, I have how I passed my praxis last year. That was whew, weight off my shoulders. Um, just some teacher tips. And then, like I said, I have a whole series of videos that I'm gonna probably try to upload this week. Um, classroom setup, how I lesson plan, how I do a unit, how I keep the kids engaged, and anything else you wanna know about how I create a functioning high school English classroom, ask me down below and I'll try to answer. Bye.